Big data for us is extremely exciting because it's giving us completely new measurements of how people behave. So something's really changed in the past few years and everything we do now generates data, whether you're calling your friend for a chat or you're buying some bread in the supermarket or perhaps you're taking a tube and you're using your Oyster card. And this gives us access to really large scale, natural setting data from which we can better understand how people behave. Using this information, we can improve forecasts of human behavior in various different domain areas, say economics, but also health and other areas, in order to predict what they are likely to do in the near future. For us, it's just a gigantic ocean of information which we can try and exploit in order to learn something about human behavior. One of the most exciting things for us about these new data sources is that they're naturally generated. And that means that just by using Google or by using Wikipedia, people are generating large sources of data on what they're interested in. And the exciting thing is that Google and Wikipedia actually give us access to this data. So you can't find out what your neighbor was Googling last night, but you can find out information about general trends in what people have been interested in around the world and at different times of the year. We access these online services to find out what people have been looking for, what people have been posting to the internet, and see if we can find some correlations between what's been happening online and what's been happening in the real world. To give you one example, we recently looked into the behavior of people searching for information online and related this to behavior in the financial markets. We found that financially um, important keywords, for example the term debt, can be leading indicators for subsequent stock market losses on a weekly basis. This isn't to say you could go away and implement this tomorrow and become extremely rich, because the financial markets is very much a system where these sorts of predictive patterns get absorbed very quickly and the dynamics change. But it does show the potential to use all of this online data to better understand decisions that people are making in the real world. So another data source we were really fascinated with is Flickr. We looked at the number of photos taken by users all over the world which got attacked by the term Hurricane, Hurricane Sandy or Sandy, when Hurricane Sandy made landfall um, in the end of October 2012 um, when the hurricane reached the US East Coast. We found that this mirrors perfectly, almost perfectly, the behavior of atmospheric air pressure. So when a hurricane reaches land, so their air pressure falls and falls and falls until it reaches a, a dip. And um, at the same time, the number of photos increased really dramatically um, with a match. So when we recorded the highest number of photos taken, this was exactly in the moment when Hurricane Sandy made landfall. So we've really only scratched the surface of what's possible here. We're generating ever greater amounts of information online. And at the same time, there's been a lot of movement in open government, opening up huge administrative data sets that give us more spatial and temporal information about what's really happening in the real world. And so the potential that we have to link this real world information and this online information to get a better understanding of how people are behaving right now and the kind of patterns we might see repeat in the future is immense.